welcome to um, May 12th, God Life. Uh, I'm Devin, I'm your host. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be talking with Jan today. Um, and so Jan, if you wanna introduce yourself with whatever you feel comfortable sharing, um, we'd love to hear a little bit about you before we get into the show. I'm Jan and I have been here with uh, GMO for, well, since 2012 and with Facebook ministry since 2013 when we started it. And I love doing this. Uh, I talked to a lot of people uh, over the years and uh, uh, share Jesus, love to share Jesus. I love to write stories and um, the uh, devotional that we're talking about today, which is about uh, hopelessness about David, um, is actually one of my favorite stories um, from the Bible. I love the story of David. Sweet. Yeah, I think even when I was getting ready for this show, I think I mentioned it beforehand that I'm reading through First and Second Samuel right now. And so hearing your perspective was really enjoyable. But OK, cool. Well, I guess before we get into it, I'll go ahead and pray for us. Um, and then we'll ask you some questions about your devotional, because um, I'm sure everybody's excited to hear your thoughts. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, God, um, we're so grateful for this chance or for the chance I have today um, to talk with Jan, Lord. We just pray that you would bless this time, give her wisdom as she shares what we learned from the devotional. And yeah, Jesus, ultimately, you're our only hope. And so we pray that through this devotional, Lord, um, that people would put their hope in you, whether it's for the first time um, or whether it's for the first time in a long time um, or whether it's just the daily um, process of continuing to hope in you. We pray that you would work powerfully. Um, and use us in whatever way you see fit. We love you. God, we're so thankful for your crossing and resurrection. And we pray this all in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, yeah, I guess before we, we get into it, y'all, um, so today's conversations um, are about hope in times of hopelessness. So have there been any times in y'all's lives where you've been feeling hopeless? Um, feel free to comment in the chat. We'd love to just hear. Um, and yeah, we'll hopefully be able to respond to some comments and just, yeah, Talk about what hope in times of hopelessness looks like. So Ruth, would you mind giving us like a brief summary of your devotional before we kind of get into the questions? The devotional is about um, David and as an example of what, oh my, life for David was so, so traumatic. His uh, dad-in-law tried to kill him um over and over his family was upset with him for a lot of years um his his brothers were jealous of him uh life was not easy for david um and many many times he would run uh for his life literally and uh, one of the stories that we that is in this one is about when he had been working with an an enemy kingdom because his own king was trying to assault king saul was trying to kill him and so he went to the philistines and worked for them or at least they thought he was working for them um but um he came back from a um a, a trip to find his entire i mean the, the entire town was uh, decimated completely gone destroyed every single person was gone and even his men uh who had stayed with him all those years through the through the hard times uh threatened to kill him um and you know what is he supposed to do <laughs> lord where, where are you um and sometimes we feel that way you know maybe there's not somebody specifically trying to kill me right now um, but there are people who don't like me um, people who say th terrible things about me or whatever they you know any of these things can be can be any one of our um, words for our lives um, for example, uh, those of you who have seen uh, the videos with me before know that uh, about six months ago, uh, I lost my sister. And um, so not only is it somebody trying to hurt us, but we're, we're alone or lonely or, uh, you know, and feel like nobody knows us nobody cares nobody you know nobody sees us um and so we we just struggle 
to find hope in this world. And that's what David was doing um, in the Psalms. So many of the Psalms are his struggle um, to, to find a reason to go on living. And in every one of these cases, he always finds that Jesus is the one. Je Jesus is the reason that we stay alive. Um, I just said this to somebody today. Um, what, what do I lose if I gave, give up something that I cannot keep to gain something I cannot lose? You know, a famous man said that. Uh, but that's, that's where our lives need to live if we're going to have hope. We give up what we cannot keep. Uh, I can't keep, I can't keep my life the way it was. Um, I can't, you know, I eventually with all the things that are happening in the world, uh, I'm going to lose things here in this world. Um, so I can't keep them. So I find the thing, I, I give that up to keep the thing that I cannot lose. And that is the love of Jesus, his promises, and his eternal life. And the day is coming when, and soon, when we will see him face to face. And he will give us more than we can ever, ever imagine. Um, we, we can't imagine. And if we, if we set our hope on the eternal rather than on something here, um, for example, okay, back to my own situation, somebody to be a just somebody to talk to me every day. I can't have that. Uh, but I can have Jesus who will be with me forever. And um, by the way, Jesus gives us, gives us, and I call them God hugs. Uh, he gives us God hugs in amazing little ways. If we just, um, just, just see them. If we're just willing to see them, or if we can see them, open our eyes because he's there. Just because we can't see him with our eyes doesn't mean that he's not there. He is. And in him is hope. And in his hope comes strength to do what he asks us to do. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I appreciate your vulnerability. I think that's one of the things I think we all love about the Bible is the characters in the Bible aren't their lives aren't all hunky dory all the time and their walks with God aren't like perfect or, or neat. Like we like them. It's so realistic. Um, but I guess, yeah, this transitions nicely into the first question. So the scripture that the devotional was based on Psalm 27 talks about wanting to look upon God in the land of the living. Um, so the question I have for you, and you touched on this a little bit, but I'd love to hear you elaborate. How does kind of the unique Christian view of eternity help us to hope um, even in our current struggles? <laughs> I, I say it this way, our current struggle has meaning if we look at it, if we are focused on eternity, uh, because everything that we go through here has some kind of a purpose in our life with Jesus Christ. Um, that's not just that that's not just pulling out straws from the from the air. That is a promise. But it's in Romans 8, 28, 29. And he says everything in our lives is something that he makes good. And we can't see that in the you know in the moment. We cannot see the good. Uh, how can how can something how can it be good for my sister to die that in and of itself is not good but it is it's good for her because she is home with jesus she is with jesus so it's good for her how is it good for me in this particular time i may not be able to see that but i do know the promises for real 
And so if I hang on to that promise, then I suddenly begin to see things like, oh, I would not have had the time to do this project or I, I love to write. So if I would not have had the, I wouldn't have had even the reason to write this particular devotional mm -hmm. uh, if it hadn't been for the struggle through which um, my sister's death took me. Um, there are, you know, the blessing is the blessing for me, maybe not immediately, but it will be. Uh, maybe the blessing is for someone who read it and, and they say, oh, you know, is it for real? Is it really real? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and so as I watch, you know, maybe somebody who, who has been writing to me um, says, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to God for one more day. Okay, one more day. And then the next day is a one more day. And you just hang on to God. And as you begin to do that, to hang on to him, and then I know, I mean, if you're writing to me, uh, I, you tell me, hey, you know, I made it through another week. Way to go, God, you know. Uh, he did that for you. And so I get the joy out of your joy. Um, I get, you know, and, and it's joy that, that sustains me too. Mm -hmm. Because I begin to see something good coming out of something that hurt very badly so yeah no thank you so much for sharing and i think that's yeah such like a, a healthy biblical way of looking at it um and i even think of your sister i think we always and it is it does it's sad to lose someone die but paul even says to die is gain like your sister is face to face with the lord um what an absolute gift for her um as she like just gets ready to spend all eternity with him but okay yeah i guess the next question so we we all face trials of, of oh sorry we we're gonna say something Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you were about to start talking. Um, I'll ask the question. My bad. Um, so yeah, we all face trials of different magnitudes. Um, so I think King David, um, Saul, like attempting to kill him, all these different tragedies. Um, but God promises to be with us in all trials, um, whether we see him as big or small. So I guess in what ways um, can this text that the devotional is based on kind of be applied to maybe the day-to-day -day stressors of life? Um, so maybe not this King Saul coming after us, or maybe not even something as serious as like, yeah, the death of a loved one, but even those day-to-day -day stressors um, that we're kind of all dealing with. Yeah, what are some ways that you see the text applying there? It's um, it, it's it's everywhere. You know, I mean, I I know that that's so easy to say. Mm -hmm. um, um, again, I I'm going to say um, because we're talking about hope out of hopelessness. Um, one of the just one little situation. I mean, it was just a little thing. Um, because I just said to God, God, I just need a hug. And he said, I'm here. And I said, you can't give me a hug. And he said, oh, yeah. And he put an idea in my head. And it, that it was a hug. It was it was a most magnificent hug. Um, I to explain that is, I mean, what the idea was to write a poem. And uh, I love poetry, uh, which is probably one of the reasons I like David so much. Um, but it, I hadn't write, written a poem in a long, long time. And uh, so I wrote this poem and it, I mean, it normally takes me for this particular kind of poem, it usually takes me Oh, at least a month or six weeks to write it because it's a difficult kind of a poem to write. Um, but I had it done in about four days. Wow. And it, <laughs> it was God's way of giving me a hug. And he said, well, you know, I mean, he was just kind of, you know, he puts this stuff in your head. And if you, if you're having that conversation with him, um, you know, he does. It, it's not audible. I can't hear it through through my ears, mm -hmm. uh, but it's there to say um, 
here's here's an idea and i would never ever ever in a million years have thought of that um but he gave it to me and it was um yeah he gives us a hug um it's a mental hug but they're just as effective as a physical hug um we it, that's relationship it's it's a personal relationship with jesus christ and it comes out of the fact that you have nothing to fear um fear causes hopelessness when you're afraid of something you're afraid of being alone or you're afraid of dying or you're afraid of getting sick or whatever it is whatever the fear is uh fear leads to hopelessness because um you you can't fix things um i say it this way whenever whenever i meet a doctor uh, i say you can't fix me uh I'm broken and there's no fixing me. Only God's going to fix me. Uh, so don't try, just help. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we set, step back away from the thing that we want, you know, the fear, um, I, I'm afraid because I don't have job. I'm afraid because I don't have money. I'm afraid because my family's going to hate me if I accept Christ. I'm afraid if... Um, uh, you know, that I'm going to fail in my classes, whatever the fear is, uh, when we step back away from that fear and no, don't no longer look at the fear itself, but look beyond and look at Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm right here. I'm right here. And you have that personal, personal relationship. And that personal relationship comes through reading the Bible letting him talk to you through it and then you talking to him in it it's this is a conversation yeah. and uh if somebody was in my house you know when in like especially in the evening when i'm reading the bible or whatever and i'm talking to him people are you nuts no i'm talking to jesus yeah. <laughs> but it is personal it's very personal and it's very real and it comes as you release that fear to him, give it to him. Um, somebody says, well, my fear is so big. Well, shine the light on it. The light is Jesus Christ. And when you shine a light on the fear, you discover that it's just a shadow because it's not real. Some things that you're afraid of can be real. Uh, loss of a job, it can be real, but he's, he promises to take care of us. And he keeps his promises. And so if we, uh, if we just believe him, that's it, believe and trust, uh, he'll take care of us. And then he does the, he gives us the hugs. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's somebody comes by and gives you a bag full of groceries that you, where, where are they, where, where'd you come up with that? You know, uh, well, they're just they're they're these are yours you know don't just say thank you to that person and then thank you lord because he's the one that gave you he's the one who provided for you um you found something that helped you uh well how come you found it jesus was there uh you know there are no coincidences in our lives when we walk with jesus christ not not one there are no coincidences yeah, completely agree. Um, and I even like what you shared earlier about like, even like first John, like perfect love, casting out fear. Uh, and I, the doctor, when I'm actually starting medical school soon, and I was thinking about that idea of like, we can't solve people permanently, but the resurrection will. Uh, and so we just mm -hmm. need to be faithful in the meantime. Cool. Okay, well, yeah, I think since you mentioned Jesus specifically, uh, let's talk about him. So I think Matthew 11, 28 to 30, um, Jesus tells us that he's where we need to come for rest. Um, he's the person to come to. And so I guess my question for you is, why do you think Christ, and rather than other places such as like success, financial security, relationships, et cetera, any number of things, um, why do you think Jesus is where we should go instead of those other places to ultimately find rest? The other things are, um, how do I say this? 
we we want things and the things that we want are not usually things that are good for us because it's what we think it's it's our idea of of what's good for us um and the vast majority of the time it's not going to be um the bible says that we have temptation from three different sources from the devil from the world and from ourselves mm-hmm. um and usually the we can we can spot the stuff from the the world or from the devil but when it's a temptation that comes from our own want um it's very hard because we're we're so used to uh, the words from a song from when when i was probably your age if it feels so good it can't be wrong it is yeah. and yeah uh it is wrong and and sin god doesn't call sin sin because he hates it he calls it sin because it's bad for us it destroys us um pick one um money I want money. I need money. No, money is an awful God. It will never, ever, ever satisfy you. Um, Look at the people in the world today who are rich beyond anything we can even count. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they want more. It's not enough. Uh, Money is an evil God that can never, ever satisfy. Um, Human love, sex, uh is a drive from our body um and it can never satisfy um because it damages us um so we have to we have to turn away from those things that's why we have to find our satisfaction in jesus because he alone um can give us everything that is good the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Um, and we don't, you know, if, if, if we're looking for our own way of whatever, satisfaction or uh, love or getting ahead or whatever it is, um, it will never satisfy but Jesus can give us a satisfaction that is beyond words. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's beyond description. Um, it, it it just it's beyond everything. You know how can <laughs> okay back to the poem. How can one poem, just one poem? How can one poem be that much of a hug? Um, you know, it doesn't make sense. It really, truly doesn't, but it does, you know, it's, 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 it's a satisfaction that he gave because he knew exactly what I needed when I didn't, um, but he did. And, you know, Sometimes you just simply can't explain it. It just is. (laughs) It just works that way. He he can do that. He can do that with things. Um, I'm thinking about David's life. Um, There was one point in time when he and his men were marching along. He had no idea that on the opposite side of the hill, was Saul's army and suddenly something told David to turn around and leave and he did and Saul's army never had a clue he didn't David didn't know until later on how close they had come Uh, and Saul's army would have beaten David's guys hands down uh, because there were 3,000 in Saul's army and what 400 in David's little band uh, they would have beaten the living daylights out of, uh, out of David and his men. Um, but something said, 
move, you know, go the other way. And they did. And we don't, we don't understand, you know, in this particular situation, uh, David found out why. Um, we don't always understand why we were, you know, well, what was that all about? I don't know. Not until later. Uh, you know, someday Jesus will tell us what it was all about. He'll say, hey, you know, remember that little trip down there and you had a flat tire and uh, you were just matter and whatever for the flat tire. But he said, you know what? I knew that if you got to such and such an intersection, a drunk was going to come through there and your time, it would, I mean, the timing would have been perfect and he would have hit you and you would have been killed or your kids would have been killed or something. He said, so I gave you a flat tire so that you didn't encounter that person. Oh, well, see, we don't know that now. We can't know that now, uh, but we have to trust because that's what he says he does. He takes care of us every single moment. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And yeah, I think like who has known the mind of the Lord to be his counselor, right? Like who are we um, to dictate how God does things? But cool, I guess final question um, so you mentioned in the devotional, I think this was my like favorite part was Mary sitting down at the feet of Jesus to listen. Uh, and so I guess, yeah, a question I have for you, or maybe you could share is maybe for a new Christian, or maybe someone just considering being a Christian, um, what might it look like to sit down at the feet of Jesus and listen in like our day to day lives, or even just for the first time to try it? What, what might that practically look like? It might look like sitting down in a chair. Um, and opening your Bible and just reading uh, some verses, um, let's say out of the book of John. Yeah. And I'm going to say John three, because that was Nicodemus came to Jesus when, you know, during the night, because he didn't want to be seen with Jesus. Um, and he came to Jesus and Jesus explained things a bit Jesus explained them in a way that made Nicodemus wonder, what are you talking about? And uh, that sometimes that's what it means to sit at Jesus' feet. Jesus, I'm not understanding this at all. What are you talking about? What do you mean? And, but you stay there. You stay there and you read the words again and say, Jesus, I really truly don't understand. Can you please explain? And suddenly the words just explain that you understand. And that is sitting at the feet of Jesus um, like Mary did. It's, it's just staying there. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't make sense. And you say, Jesus, I don't understand. Can you please explain? But you stay. You stay until you understand. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes we get up and say, Jesus, I still don't understand. And we come back maybe the next night and we open the, open the words again. And the next night, eventually we'll understand. He'll explain it. He will explain. If we stay at his feet, we don't run away. We just stay at his feet and find you know, the busyness of our life, um, we just let it go and say, I want to understand Pro Jesus's promise. James 1, five. if you ask me for wisdom, I will give it to you. That's a promise. It's not say if or when, it's a promise. It's a flat out promise. If you ask, I will give you. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter whether it is, you know, uh, if you're if you're uh, going into medic uh, school for to medicine, uh, and you say, "Hey, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense at all." <laughs> yeah, I've got a test tomorrow, and I don't understand. You know, Jesus, I need your wisdom, not the knowledge, but the wisdom, and there's a difference. Because the wisdom is understanding why. Rather than knowledge is understanding the dots, you know, connecting the dots. No, understanding the dots, seeing the dots. Wisdom is connecting the dots. So 
Yeah, Jen, thank you for sharing. Um, and I love that it's, it's as easy as sitting down in a chair and just opening up your Bible and reading. Um, and sometimes that means over and over, but I think that's beautiful is that, yeah, three things, chair, Bible, you, and you don't even need to chair sometimes um, if you don't have one, but awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, Jen, just for your time. Um, yeah, I guess for those of you guys in the audience, if you're wondering how to connect with us, um, go to godlife.com. And while you're there, you go to the resources page, click the no God button, and either an online volunteer or someone else will be happy to walk alongside you as you begin to learn more about God, or feel to feel free to send us a Facebook message today um, to also get connected with an online volunteer to just discuss faith, answer questions, really wherever you're at, there's someone who would love to just meet with you um, and just talk with you through what you're going. So yeah, thank you all so much. Um, yeah, a virtual rounds of applause for Jan. Um, thank you once again for sharing with us. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Course, yeah. Thank you, Devin. Yes, of course. You're very welcome. And yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day.